the Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, Joe Terrace. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. As they say in books, I am more than somewhat at a loss to figure how to begin telling you about Joe Terrace, who is a linotype operator on one of the Daily Blats. I guess it begins one early morning about 4 in the a.m. in Mindy's. Quite a few of the newspaper guys drop in for a snack. And Joe Terrace does also when he finishes work. Well, on this particular morning, I am sitting with Johnny Brannigan, uh, plainclothes gendarme, and Marty Freider, who will bet on anything. Marty looks up and says, I could have made book on it. There he comes. Joe Terrace. Right on the dot, 4 a.m. I wonder who winds him up and sets him. <laughs> I hear tell he's the best line of typer in town. Never makes a mistake. Every guy makes a mistake, Marty, sooner or later. Not Joe. I hear also that he never leaves out so much as a dot over an eye. No guy is perfect, not even him. Got any dough, Johnny? Not for a touch. No touch. But you're sure every guy slips up sooner or later, huh? Murderers, crooks, con men, even plain, ordinary guys like Joe Terrace. Why? I'll lay five to one on Joe. What do you mean, huh? We'll find out what stuff he sets up on a paper. You and me make a bet for six months that he don't slip. Not even once? Not even half a once. Anything counts? Anything. A word left out, one too many put in, anything. For how much? My 50 against your 10. <laughs> you get that, Broadway? Uh-huh. Marty bets that Joe does not make a mistake for six months. You say he does. It's a deal. I still say that sooner or later, every guy makes a mistake. It's what's called human nature. And Joe Terrace is only human. So that is the way Marty Freighter and Johnny Brannigan make a bet. Personally, I think Johnny stands to lose the sober because I know Joe Terrace and he is like a machine. However, what happens is something for the books, and I will tell you about it in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Joe Terrace. Well, like I say, Marty and Johnny make that bet. And a couple of weeks go by, and Joe Terrace never forgets so much as a comma or a similar item. Now, I purposely leave out telling you about Joe's wife before, because it is hard to tell you what she is like. Except that she is short and a little more than somewhat on the uh, full side in build. However, it is always 4.30 a.m. when she comes in Mindy's to get Joe. And one morning, the scene is as follows. I like to come in here, Broadway. Want another cup of coffee, Joe? Oh, no. Thanks, Broadway. It's about time for Tubby to show up, and she never likes me to have more than one cup. Oh, I see. You've never been married, have you? i managed to evade the possibility for some time now. Have you ever thought about it? Oh, I think about it. But then I dismissed the idea as foolish. Oh. I've been married for 18 years. Just a tubby, huh? Just a tubby. Well, it is nice to see a citizen who is steady. It Hiya, is... fellas. Oh, sit down, Johnny. Thanks. How are you, Joe? Uh, just fine, Johnny. And you? Good. When are you going to slip up, Joe? Huh? Slip? What do you mean? You don't know about the bet, huh? What bet? Oh, Johnny here and Marty Freda make a bet on you, Joe. Marty bets you never make a mistake in your work. Johnny says you will. <laughs> I've never made one yet in my work. I got 24 weeks left to see you do it. A lot can happen in 24 weeks. I'm counting on that. Well, here comes Tubby. I guess I got to go. Well, here I am right on the dot. Hello, Broadway, Johnny. Oh, oh yes. you ready to I... go, Joe? Yes, dear, I'm ready. I always like to see Joe come in here after work. It relaxes him. His line of work is so exacting, don't you think? Well, A man I... needs to relax, don't you think so? And I think a man's wife should always help him do that. I think after sitting in that stuffy room at the paper all night, he needs his wife to talk to, don't you? Well, I... Joe and I talk about a lot of things, don't we, Joe? Yes, we do. Uh, well, Everything I... go all right tonight, Joe? Well, except... Everything for... always goes all right for Joe. He's the most careful man in the world. Why, his pipe's always in the same place, and... Did anything interesting happen tonight, Joe? Nothing. 
Nothing at all. Oh, you poor dear, you're tired. Come on, I've got the car parked at the garage. We'll walk there and pick it up. Oh, I had the tank filled and the whole thing checked. Well, was something wrong? Joe, don't you know what day tomorrow is? Another day. Joe, it's our day off. Oh, uh, I forgot. Just like a man. You know, we always take a drive up the Palisades on our day off. We haven't missed in ten years, have we, Joe? Except for the time Not we... once in ten years. We pack a lunch and just relax. Yeah, I can see that. Well, let's go, Joe. I know you like to talk to your friends, but you got to get some sleep sometime. Good night, Broadway, Johnny. Good night. Good night. See you later. Sure, okay, Joe. Be good, Joe. Yeah. Good. Joe, I think you ought to talk to the man about the paint on the house. Funny that a quiet guy like Joe oh, should marry a dame who, uh, likes to talk. Maybe Joe is not quiet 18 years ago. Maybe he just gets that way. <laughs> I see what you mean. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing to laugh about. A doll like that can be very wearing on a man over 18 years. I wasn't thinking about that. Oh, no? What do you think about, Johnny? Oh, just that I made the wrong bet. Well, how do you figure that? I should have made the bet 18 years ago because, brother, he made his big mistake then. Well, a couple more weeks go by, and still Joe Terrace never pulls a clinker in his work. It is letter perfect. Then it is one morning about time for Joe to show up in Mindy's. I am sitting with Marty Freighter, and we are talking about the bet. I tell you, Broadway, it is like betting on the only horse in a race. I cannot lose. You notice what time it is? Huh? Yeah, almost 4.15 a.m. Why? And you think nothing is peculiar? Peculiar? You mean funny? Peculiar is what I say. What are you talking about? Where is Joe Terrace? Huh? I... Hey, he is late. Yeah, he is late. Now, that's funny. Very. Because every morning for a long time, Joe Terrace comes in right about four bells. In fact, the chef times is cooking by Joe Terrace. Maybe it's his day off. Uh-uh. Yesterday is. Oh. Say, you don't think anything's happened to the guy, do you? All I say is, it is very peculiar that he does not show up. Yeah. And I... Hey, there's Johnny Brannigan. Yeah, I see him. Hey, uh, hey, Johnny. Over here. Hello, Marty. Broadway. Hi, Johnny. What's new, Johnny? Lots. What do you mean by lots? You drinking this coffee? It has got sugar in it. I like sugar. You got something on your mind, Johnny? Uh-huh. Joe didn't come in, did he? We are just talking about it when we see you. Joe won't be here. Not this morning. Something happens? Something happens. Something about our bet? Nope. Yesterday was Joe's day off. Yeah, I know that. What about it? Every day off, he and his wife take a drive up to the Palisades for a picnic. What are you getting at, Johnny? It didn't turn out to be a picnic yesterday. Hand me the cream. Right here. This is what I like about gendarmes. They talk all around things without well, ever saying anything. Training. Well, Joe and his wife took their outing. Only Joe came back from it. What happened? From the way Joe told it, she, Tubby, got a little too close to the edge. She was dead when Joe got down to her. The poor guy. The poor little guy. Yeah. It's all broken up. You see him? Uh-huh. About a half hour ago. Gee... Marty, if you want to call the bet off, it's all right with me. A guy in Joe's spot isn't responsible for any mistakes he makes. Mm, no. I'll stick with the guy. Okay. Gee, this makes me feel awful bad. I I don't feel like sitting here anymore. He's going to miss her after 18 years. I got to go. I don't like it here anymore. See you tomorrow. Yeah, bye. So long, Marty. Um, Jenny. Hmm? How does it happen you go to see Joe? Routine. What routine? Ah, uh, just routine. By the way, are you doing anything special tomorrow? Well, I plan on a few hours at the track. A Jamaica. You never pick the right GGs. How about saving yourself some money and take a trip with me tomorrow? Where to? The Palisades. Now that makes me wonder more than someone. It is a little better than six to five that Johnny Brannigan is not making a trip to the Palisades for the scenery. So I am very curious. And the next day I find myself with Johnny, and the scene is as follows. Here's the spot right here. Yeah. Oof. It is straight down. Anybody falling off here is a sure bet to stop breathing. Yes, and uh, maybe you will now tell me why you wish to come here. Just curious. I know you are a very curious citizen, Johnny. But this time it seems to me your curiosity is very strange. Maybe. How long did Joe say he and Tubby's been coming here? Ten years. Only she said it. That's right. She said it. In fact, she said a lot of things. What does that mean? 
Nothing, I guess. But in ten years, you get to know a place pretty well. In fact, you could get to know it so very well that you could walk around blindfolded. Just what is on your mind, Johnny? Ah, uh, just a meek little guy. A meek little guy who got along just fine with his wife. Joe and Tubby? I never hear that they ever fight or even have a crossword. That's right. In fact, Joe has very few words to say. Johnny, you are crazy. Sure, sure. You are a cop so long that when something happens that is out of the ordinary, you like to start thinking like a detective. Wrong, Broadway. I'm starting to think like Joe Terrace. Like Joe... Johnny, I like you. So I do not mind telling you now that I think you are out of line. Joe is a nice little guy. A swell little guy. A little guy who never makes a mistake. The kind of nice little guy who thinks ahead. Patient. Never does a thing in a rush, but takes his time. So that makes him push his wife off at this place? Did I say that, Broadway? For a guy who does not say it, you make a lot of noises in favor of him. Okay, I'm a cop. I like Joe Terrace, but I'm a cop, Broadway. There is any doubt about it? Let's get out of here. I will be glad to do so. Yeah, I don't like it here. You change your mind about Joe? I never had it made up, one way or the other. I just got to wondering what would happen to a guy who likes it quiet and peaceful. A guy who suddenly can't stand a, a lot of talk anymore. You mean that is why he... Hey, now you have got me wondering about it. Okay. I'll wait. Wait for Joe to make his mistake. Well, you know he never makes any. Oh, I'm not thinking about my bed, Broadway. I'm thinking about another kind of mistake. The kind nobody ever realizes he makes. So, that is that. Johnny is a real smart cop. But nobody ever believes that Joe does anything wrong. In fact, I think Johnny is crazy. But like I say, he is a smart gender. How smart he is and what happens, I will tell you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Joe Terrace. Well, after that day at the Palisades with Johnny, I keep a very careful watch. And I see that Johnny watches Joe Terrace. In fact, Johnny makes it a point to be in Mindy's every morning when Joe comes in for his coffee after work. But Johnny never says anything about Tubby or the accident. He is very careful to talk about everything else. Until one morning when the three of us are sitting at a table. And what happens is like this. You're looking better again, Joe. Better? Oh, oh, thanks. Yeah, come to think of it, you are looking better, Joe. Yeah, pretty good for an old man, I guess. Old? You can't be more than, say, 45, Joe. 46. 46. You don't look it. Now take me, a cop. I'm only 37, but I look 50. 51? Thanks, Broadway. I only feel 52. But I guess it's my work. You know, being a cop takes something out of a guy. I think it's because he has to, well, be suspicious. Suspicious? Of everybody, Jimmy? Sometimes. Not always. Tomorrow's your day off, isn't it, Joe? Tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Gonna stay in town? Sure. Why? Ah, nothing. I was just thinking, you must miss those picnics you and Tubby used to take. Johnny, for the love of me. No, it's all right, Broadway. I do miss them. I miss him a lot. That's a pretty spot you used to go to, Joe. How do you know? I, uh, I went there the day after. Why? I don't know. Well, I gotta be going now. See you later, Broadway, Johnny. Yeah, take it easy, Joe. Sure, take it easy. Brannigan, it is not very long ago that I think you are a good guy. In fact, for a gendarme, you are a very good guy. But that is ten seconds ago. My opinion has changed more than somewhat. You're fickle, Broadway. You'll give that poor guy a very bad needle. Did I? Please do not act innocent with me. It is only a month ago that the accident happens with Tubby. A guy like Joe is not over it yet. And you sit here and make him remember it even more. Maybe I had a reason. Oh, you are still on that kick, huh? Yeah. Broadway, what are you doing tomorrow? Keeping real far away from you. Let's go to the Palisades. What? What is the matter with you? Look, go with me. Just once more. Why? Well, I, I like you. I like to think you like me. I don't want you to change your mind. It is already too late to hope that. Look, go with me tomorrow for the last time, and I promise you something. Like what, for example? If you don't agree with me even a little after we get back, 
I'll never say another word about the whole thing. I promise. I do not know what Johnny is thinking. All I know is that he has got me very curious indeed. So it is the next day about noon that we end up at the Palisades. Johnny parks his car a good piece away from the spot. And I wonder about this, but not for long. Because just when we get to the edge of the place we come the last time, Johnny grabs my arm and says... Look, Broadway. But, Joe, it is Joe Terrace. Yeah, Joe Terrace. What is he doing here? Want to find out? What are you going to do? Just talk to him. Come on. Hello there, Joe. Huh? Johnny. Broadway. Hope we didn't scare you, Joe. Scare me? Why should I be scared, Johnny? Well, we came up on you kind of suddenly. Yeah. What are you doing here? You on Broadway. Looking. What's the idea, Broadway? It seems I come along for the ride. It is not a pleasant one. I see. Standing close to the edge there, aren't you, Joe? No, not very. You know, we might have scared you so much that you could have jumped back and down. I never get that scared, Johnny. You know your way around, huh? Yes, I do. Why are you here, Joe? It's my day off. Tubby and I used to spend it here. I just came up to... to well, I just felt like it, that's all. Tubby liked it here, didn't she? Lots. For ten years she came here with you. Then one day she gets too close to the edge Johnny, and... have a hunt. That's all right, Broadway. Johnny's right. I, I can't figure out how she happened to get so close... She never did it before. Once is enough. Yeah. Once is enough. You know, if two people were here alone, and one of them wanted to get rid of the other, it'd be easy. That is, if one of them wanted that. If one of them hated the other enough. Oh, sure, always that. Not like you and Tubby. I guess there wasn't a happier couple in New York. Everybody says so. I'm glad everybody says so. I'd hate to think anyone thought different about me and Tubby. I guess you would. Well, I guess we'll be going, Broadway. So long, Joe. So long, Johnny. Broadway. See you later, Joe. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, by the way, Joe. Here, yeah, Johnny. I'm still waiting for you to make that mistake. I don't make mistakes. Everybody does, sooner or later. You shouldn't have made that bet. I got time. Lots of it. Come on, Broadway. Well, I have got to admit that maybe Johnny has got something. There is the way Joe looks at him, the way he talks, the way he seems so sure of himself. And he does not seem real broken up. However, Johnny never lets up. He keeps watching Joe. And whenever the two meet, it is like a couple of boxers. Then it comes up one night in Mindy's, and the scene is as follows. Where's Johnny, Broadway? Huh? You say something, buddy? Yeah, I say, where is Johnny Brannigan? Oh, I do not know. Why do you ask? Just because tonight is the last night he has got. Oh, it is six months already, huh? To the day. Mm. <laughs> a sure thing, Broadway. I could have given 20 to one and never lose a wink of sleep. Joe Terrace just don't make no mistakes. You know, Marty, it seems as though you were right. Very right. You'd have thought a guy losing his wife like he does would have slipped one time or another. But nope. He goes right on like a machine. Yeah, like a machine. Yeah, speaking of your bet, here comes Johnny. <laughs> yeah, watch me give him the needle. Not too much. I do not think he is liable to take it kindly. Sore loser, huh? Yeah, maybe, but not the way you think. Hiya, Johnny. Broadway, Marty. Johnny, you owe me a sawbuck. Not yet, Marty. It is six months. It'll be six months at four o'clock tomorrow morning. We bet on the hour, too? Yeah, we did. Fair enough, Broadway? It seems to me that it is. The six months will be up at four o'clock tomorrow morning. So that gives me six more hours. Okay. <laughs> if Joe Terrace does not slip in six months, he will not slip in six hours. But at four o'clock, you hand over his sawbuck. Sure. And I agree with you, Marty. If Joe Terrace doesn't slip in the next six hours, I'll quit trying. You mean that, Johnny? That's right, Broadway. I mean it. I know the way Johnny says that, that he does mean it. Maybe he has got doubts now, too. But, like I say before, Johnny is a smart cop. Well, what with one thing and another, and because I have got to get up early to go to the track the next day, I retire early. I am in bed by four in the morning, and I'm just drifting away when I hear... 
Yeah. Who is it? Broadway. This is Johnny. Johnny? Johnny Brannigan? Yeah. What are you doing? I am planning to sleep. What are you doing? Staying awake for life? Can you meet me in half an hour in front of Mindy's? Huh? Why? I think Joe Terrace made a mistake. Okay, Johnny. I will be there in 15 minutes. I'll be in a cab in front. We'll have a couple of calls to make. Calls? Yeah. One to Joe's paper, then to a minister by the name of McClee. Minister? Johnny, you are talking to me, Broadway. And besides, you are already married. Just be there, that's all. Johnny, please tell me what this is all about. First you rush to the paper, you do a lot of talking. Now you're rushing out to a minister. Yeah, that's right. I just wanted to make sure Joe set up the line of type for this. What is it? Tell you later. I guess this is it. Wait here, cabbie. Be right back. Come on, Broadway. It seems to me that 4.30 in the morning is no time to be paying a call on anybody, much less a minister. I called him. He knows I'm coming. I will try to be patient, but the top of my head is bulging. How do you do, uh, Mr. Brannigan? Me. It's nice of you to go to this trouble, Reverend McClee. Not at all. Your phone call was very unusual. We won't come in. That it in your hand? Yes. Here you are. Won't take a minute. This is exactly the way you wrote it? Word for word. Nothing left out, nothing added. It's an exact copy. In fact, you can see that's a carbon. Can I have this for a while? Certainly. And I, uh, I hope for his sake that you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, thanks, Reverend McClee. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now the top of my head is all the way off, Johnny. Broadway, let's go see Joe Terrace. He is a very hard sleeper. You knocked for a minute already. Take it easy. What's the matter? Oh. Hello, Joe. Johnny. Mind if we come in? No, come on. Joe, this won't take only a few seconds. Joseph Terrace, I hereby arrest you for the murder of your wife. You do? Why, Johnny? On your confession. Confession? Johnny, he does not say a word. He didn't have to. Did you, Joe? What do you know, Johnny? How do you know? Here. You set the type of this sermon by Reverend McClee, didn't you? Uh, Yes, I did. You can check at the paper. I did. Now, here... Here's a copy of the sermon. Reverend McClee gave it to me. Take a look at it, Joe. A good look. Read it carefully. Then read what you set up for the paper. I see. I guess I made a mistake, didn't I? (laughs) How do you like that? All my life I've been a typesetter and linotype operator, and this is the first mistake I ever made. Coming along, Joe. I guess I am, Johnny. I guess I am. You know, I'm glad. It was kind of a strain on me. Else I never would have made that mistake. Okay, Johnny, I'll dress and go with you. So Joe dresses and goes with me and Johnny. By this time, I am unable to say a word because I do not know what to talk about. It is later that morning, after Joe is booked, that Johnny and me are sitting in Mindy's, and he tells me the payoff, which I will tell you in a minute. Like I say, it is later that morning in Mindy's. Johnny is talking to me. I just about gave up, Broadway. In fact, I would have if it hadn't been for that bet with Marty Freighter. I looked through the paper. I always read everything. It's the cop in me. Never miss a thing. You mean you even read sermons? Yeah. Let me read you something. Here. And in the brotherhood of mankind, there is everlasting hope. Oh, Lord, please forgive me for what I did. Huh? What do you say? That sentence doesn't fit, does it? Then again, we are all one in the sight of the Creator. Let us think that way. And, oh, Lord, please forgive me for what I did. Joe Terrace. He is thinking about what he does to Tubby. Yeah. His subconscious mind thought about it. 
The poor guy. It drives him crazy. Yeah, I guess so. Well, I... Well, 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 Johnny. I looked for you at four, but you are not here. No, Marty, I, uh, I was someplace else. You know you owe me a saw buck. Oh, oh, sure, sure. Here you are. <laughs> I always bet on a sure thing. See you again sometime, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, sure. Johnny, you do not lose that bet. You win it. I told you once before, Broadway. I like Joe Terrace. The mistake he made doesn't count. Not for the bet. <laughs> And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, Joe Terrace. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the story is adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production. (laughs) 